You don't say one. Oh shit, we're live? You always say one. You don't say one. Do we go? I don't think it, you're do you supposed go to on say zero or do you go on one? I'm gonna go on. You go, go on one you, kind of guy. You go. You go. You go after one, but you don't say one just in case they start recording slightly earlier. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, one, which one of us dropped out of film school again? Clearly, me at this point. <laughs> so, hey, gentlemen, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, before we get in and before you guys skip the ad, this is brought to you by Blue Chew, of course. Hello. <laughs> Let's get it out of the way now. Of course. The bet is <laughs> Blue Chew and BetDSI.com for all your gambling. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored okay. by uh, sponsored by Quincoin. Uh, oh yeah. We're sponsored by Draft Queens. Quincoin Quin going up to the moon. To the moon it's, with Quincoin. It's going past the moon. It's on a rocket ship to Mars. He would rug pull it too. He would rug pull his own <laughs> he coin. That's it, absolutely what he would do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Sounds like a I'm yes still... to me. I'm still thinking about it. All right. <clears throat> okay, so as we left off, you guys made your way back through the caverns out of the Weeping Pond and uh, have just emerged on the bank. So we are currently back at uh, position nine, correct? On the map? I... Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in character as Olga. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So I, I already have kind of a, a an idea and plan for what I would like to do as we reach back to town. Um, I know some of you uh, will go into will go in character. Uh, Quinn, I know you mentioned uh, going and doing a little shopping when we made it back. Um, I'm going to find a quiet place to sit down and uh, reflect on our previous battle and see if I can't draw up some uh, battle plans that will help us be a little bit more successful, uh, seeing as how all three of you clearly need more direction. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, what's what's you guys' thoughts on, you know, the the bizarre impossible landscape you just saw is that something you're trying to share maybe you want to kind of keep it low-key or how i think how, uh how much, we just... if anything are you are you guys going to keep close to the vest or or try to i mean is this something you want to report do you not want to report it uh yeah, if, if we report it I'm, i have a I'm, feeling we're going to send more people like down there and they're going to they're going to try to kill themselves a bit more before we start reporting Person. Yeah, I'm good with not saying much as of right this minute. Also, secondary question, uh difference between market and general store, please. Uh the market is the area where all the shops are. It's, it's effectively one shop. Ah, okay. Mechanically well, it's um, like it's like one shop. It's just a general store, it's just a spot. More for immersion than anything. Per uh Zareps incredibly uh insensitive comments about our needing direction i'm gonna scoff put my hands uh behind my head uh similar to goku as we've referred to it as before and i'm gonna walk right the fuck off without saying anything to anybody uh yeah i hey show goku walk my boy <laughs> <laughs> I, I also yeah i think uh and i'll speak for the whole group here i think we all um we're taken a little aback by what took place in there. And uh, I think uh, Connor is still our first and foremost um, mission here. Uh, and so I, I kind of say that in my own head, even actually I say it out loud to everybody around me that, you know, uh, I'm speaking for everybody when I say, let's keep this all under wraps, let's keep it close to the chest because we, uh, we don't know what we're dealing with yet. And I will have those battle plans uh, visualized for when we get back into combat and, uh, as Quinn is running off like he normally does, Azar, you can keep track of him if you'd like to. Casual stroll. Don't get it twisted. I, I think I need a doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jared. I'm going to go will... ahead and. Um... 
I was right. gonna go ahead and pick up G. Eric and take him to the doctor. <laughs> Thank you. And um, as I as I walk past Zeref, just look at him over my shoulder and say, "You don't speak for me. I don't think you. I, I hardly think you know how to speak for yourself." Ooh. Walk over to the doctor. And I'm gonna go to the shops after that. <laughs> this is not like a doctor per se. Uh, you could go to the temple and try to, you know, pay for magical healing, or you could just. You guys can just rest. That that the resting is the plan. It's just uh, currently I am in, in dire need of medical attention, so I will uh, be down for a second. Yeah, so I'm gonna take him to the forge first, and then I'm gonna go to the shops myself. Then take him right. so he can go rest and lay down. Right on. Who wants what? Oh, we have an updated store list, or is it how much now? are the potion of pure light wounds? Fifty. It's basically the same for right now. It's a torches. Okay. Torches are somewhat. Uh, it's a little big town, but it's what you see is what you get. Once you get to like a well, city, city, it's going to be a lot different. Okay. Although, if you're looking for anything let in particular, do, we can always check. Let me do a. Let me do a potion of cure light wounds and one smelling salts. Okay. What else? How much were the smelling salts again? Question. I think it's ten or fifteen. Uh twenty five. Seventy-five. I want to say ten. But... How much? It's twenty-five. Oh, okay. Fifty, seventy, seventy. Okay. Perfect. Well, you don't. You don't need another one. You only used it once. You still get like twelve charges out of it as long as you close it afterwards. Oh shit! You're right. All right, never mind. I'll just do the uh. Cure ones. The potion of cure. All right. Then... I'll take uh, two potions of cure light wounds, please. And I'll take one more uh, flash powder is like a flash bang, correct? Yeah, dead on. Cool. Uh, I'll take one more of those, increasing my total to two. And um, I would like to... I only used one cross bolt. We said I had 12. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. okay, I'm done. I have no money. <laughs> So that's 150 gold. Sure. Uh, for me? Yeah. Okay. Just letting you know. All right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna assume that like while while we're resting and stuff, I probably would have had a chance to to also go to the shop. I got this agate thing that you gave me a while back. Yeah. I want to see if I can uh as as my little parenthesis say uh sell this stuff. I will censor it. 58 GP. Can I sell? I'm gonna sell that then, sir. It's already done. Heck yeah. It's plus eight. Right. Anything else, sir? Uh, nah, not for me. I'm still pretty kitted out. I would like to start making my way towards um the head of town. Uh, you were in character in her name earlier. Um, is she at the town hall or is she at the temple? Yeah, she should be at the town hall. Okay, I would like to start heading towards the town hall um, on my own to uh, strike up a conversation with her uh, to give her a report. Okay. So you're making your way downtown. Are you walking fast and are faces passed as you're homebound? Uh, I'm not necessarily homebound. <laughs> 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 I am townbound right now. Uh, and so, yeah, so I would like to uh, hit town hall um, and I would like to uh, uh, barrel through the doors of town hall and uh, look around as if everyone's expecting me. Uh, once I'm done with the market, I will be going off into the forest uh, to be secluded. Well, there is a forest like waiting... right across the street from Connor's house. It's up to you. Smallwood. 12 is 12 is the boundary in Connor's house. 
So like over here, you could go to the. Oh yeah, that's effect. that's not nearly secluded enough. I need uh, I need to be away from everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, again probably out of uh, out of the normal knowledge of everyone else. Um, I'm going to the woods to be secluded, and I'm going to be praying to my deity for a minute. Interesting. I thought you were going for a whole Sasuke versus 50 clay pigeons kind of moment, but all right, I like it. Uh, okay, well, let's I'm do... I'm gonna go check on the bow. I'll check on things at the forge. Right on. Check on Eric, make sure he's not dead. Yeah. Uh, Just find me face down in the in the water again, as per again. usual. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how I left you. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll start with uh, we'll start with Zeref. So as you kick in the doors of the town hall, you notice it's conspicuously empty for three or four p.m. Uh, make a perception check while you're there. Sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, gotta go back to main and go back to the chat and perception. This is the one. Mm -hmm. I might. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you hear say the one. You hear a series of like dull thumps and slams coming from out behind the building. Mm -hmm. As you walk around, you see Dolga, uh, this tiny dwarven woman, absolutely smashing the shit out of four or five target dummies with that big ass warhammer that she's got. It's like, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Bringing it down, busting their heads open. Uh she kind of stops when she notices you for a second. She goes, she just raises an eyebrow. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> I I come to her and I uh I said to her, um I've assumed leadership of this group and I wanted to come back and report to you what we found. She bastard. Okay. What news do you bring? Uh, uh, nothing so far. We've we've uh, just barely breached um, the inside of the cave. It's not moving as fast as we'd like it to. And our 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 scent of the trail of Connor is it's not cold. It's just we're still working at it. It's hard sometimes when you have um, incompetence at your side and so uh i will we will be back to report to you we will be making another journey in uh within the next day or so good keep me in the loop i will and uh if you need anything please come to me first yeah yeah i will go cool. she just like turns around back to smashing shit with the hammer almost like you weren't even there just <laughs> Yelling curses and dwarvish, favorably. Mm -hmm. As we hop over to the secluded forest, what's Quinn up to? So uh, you'll see Quinn. You said it's about four in the afternoon. Uh, you'll see Quinn in a small type of clearing in a deep wooded forest. Um, you know there's light that illuminates the forest in like a soft kind of uh, amber glow and you'll see quinn sitting on top of a really large tree stump almost like it would be like four of quinn wide essentially think of like just this massive tree stump and uh he's sitting in the middle of it kind of sitting um almost like a buddhist praying pose kind of a thing eyes closed and his mask is off and uh butterflies are just kind of floating and kind of almost ethereal kind of floating around him and uh you can hear him he kind of is whispering but unless you are just right up next to his face you really can't hear anything that he's saying um after about a few moments uh you'll hear uh, maybe some leaves touching the ground or something. He'll open his eyes and uh, he seems at peace. He seems ready for the next adventure. And uh, he starts to make his way slowly and uh, gracefully back towards the town, um, back towards uh, the forge where he plans to meet up with Azar. All right. So... 
speaking of which, why don't we jump into the forge? Jump away. And so I, uh, <laughs> I go into the forge. I actually uh, put Jarek's in the forge. Okay. So I go into the forge, checking on everything, tending to uh, my daily, my my daily small tasks to make sure things are running smoothly in Connor Connor's absence. Um, I kind of prop G Eric in the corner opposite of the the water tank, noting that he likes to be face down in large puddles of water, and he's doing okay over there. Um. And then I'm going to make my way to check on Val shortly. And I apologize. Like, everything's running slowly for me today. Like, You're coming through, fun. I appreciate that because, like, everything else just seems kind of delayed on my end for some reason. The camera's definitely delayed, but when but you're speaking, we... you're definitely coming through, like, I think. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then I'll find Val probably, let me see. Is she in Connor's home? Yeah, she's in the house, just tinkering again. On the same room? Pretty right, much. So, let me. I make my way over to her through the front door. And then um, I make my way over to her, making my presence known as to not scare her. And as I approach the room that I know she's in, tinkering away, I almost instinctively have my eyes lower the brightness. I kind of dim down, so I'm a <laughs> bit less intimidating and softer towards her when I when I see her. Nice. There, she's sort of standing amidst the destroyed remains of that the robot that you guys fought, and she's got sheets of of parchment and paper all over the place. Like, there's a scrawl, a constant, somewhat changing mathematical formula. It's like going from wall to wall. She's just, like, picking up random pieces and scratching her head and thinking about it. And she goes back to, like, adjusting the formula and looking at it again. And going, no, that's not right. That's not right. Oh, hey, Zara, what's up? I walk over and I kneel down for her and I ask pretty confused. And I say, um, what, what's all this? Uh, just trying to, you know, put the pieces back together, see if he can't get it to, to work again, and you know, ah. pull some goddamn weight. So, like, kind of elbow you a little bit. Somebody's got to mow the lawn. <laughs> it's all dirt. I kind of I smirk a little bit and say, yeah, I did do a bit of a <laughs> bit of number on that, uh, that thing, <laughs> and I uh, kind of look back at her Ask her, you know, how how are you doing with everything? Well, I'm good, I guess. Just want my dad back, and I don't know, I'm kind of bored. It's, it's not the same without him here, you know what I mean? Never had to figure stuff out on my own before. Kind of let out a sigh, and I uh, look back at her, and I say, "Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. We'll do our best to get him back here as soon as possible, but I, I wouldn't worry. We're, we're, we're gonna get him back." I know. And then I start making my way towards the door, and uh, before I exit the door, I ask her, "Is there anything you need me to do with that thing there? Since I need to uh, pull my weight around here." Uh. You can send the mold in. He seems like he's good with technology. <laughs> I uh, roll my eyes and say, Polly, got it. And uh, I make my way back to the forge where Polly's with G. Eric. Polly, Polly, did you see it? Did you see what I did to that thing? <laughs> oh, I saw, brother. I oh. saw. Oh, it got it got some good hits in, but hey, that's that's okay. Everybody's safe and sound, thanks to me. That's right. Go to sleep. Go to know. sleep. End of okay. the boat. End of the boat. All right, Polly, 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 do you want to drink with me when I wake up? 
Does Quinn shit in the woods when he's not with us? <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he like makes himself a a like a little gel. 1920s like zoot suit like turns one of his hands into a comically large cigar and he's just like oh yeah get some rest we'll boogie down when you're up thanks buddy he like blows like little gel rings that they're still attached to it by tendrils they like come back you gotta teach me that trick sometime powerful magic All right. I'm going to walk in and look at Polly and say, uh, slimy one, I need you. Oh, ho. It's about goddamn time. Who we killing? Let me, let me, I don't need you. I need to take you to someone who needs you. Ah. I see. All right. Squish, squish, squish as he just like plods on after you. I'm going to lead him over to Val. Oh. What happened in here? Like a bomb went off. Something like that. Val, this is the, the, the one that you requested. How you doing, toots? She just laughs. Yeah, I heard you're pretty good with this kind of stuff. Think you could help uh, try piecing it back together? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take a look. All right. And he just, like, makes little glasses, like, on the bridge of his non-existent nose. And he's like, all right. And, like, you know, it's like sifting through the formula pages. And they just, you know, they get to it. I just stand there pretty confused because I, I know I'm useless in the situation right now. Yeah, they're just saying like random techno babble back and forth and tweaking the formula. So it takes a couple hours. They get a little bit of work done, but it's pretty, pretty heavy. Uh, I guess I start to make my way back to the foundry as well, assuming that everybody will be meeting here at some point. And I'm trying to check on GR as I, as I come back. Yeah, I figure you guys all basically get back at close to the same time. Yeah. yeah. I walk in. George as well, seeing that uh, I can't do anything. I, I walk in. I notice that Jarek's face is just straight down into a pool of water. Um, <laughs> always, always. And uh, I just lift his head up gently so he can breathe, and then I put it back down as I <laughs> go into the middle of the room and. Uh, Stare at Azar as Azar stands in his forge. Uh, for someone who likes to stand in fire for so long and take so much heat, you uh, you act pretty cool when you're out there on the battlefield for some reason. I'm just here to get the work done. No reason to lose my temper. No reason to get worked up over anything. That's what you got to tell yourself. And I turn back around and smirk at G. Eric's face down in the water and then turn back. Just bubbling in the pool a little bit, but I'm, I'm good. I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I continue tending to my flames. And uh, without even looking back, I just ask, why do you care so much about leading or who leads or whatever why don't you you seem to be a passenger on this ride a a pedestrian someone with your size and strength i'd imagine the stories told of people like you and things like you creatures like you you would have a little bit more uh fire on the inside and less on the outside you know I just, things like me, often don't care to lead or be led. Just doing these 
be done. Hmm. You and I both have a different definition of what a uh, what, what a servant looks like, I suppose. In fact, since I met you, you were Connor's servant, and now you seem to be mine as well, clearly, since I tell you where to go and when to go. I'd hope you remember who got you and Jeric out of that trunk in the back of that caravan. I serve no one except who I believe to follow. Mm. And it still proves that you're no one worth following in my eyes. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you've got one master. So you're Connor's dog. Got it. Makes sense. Make a will save. As For someone as well. who isn't of... Oh, make a will save. Yeah, as he says that. Hold on. Something in you at the at the mention, uh, being called that, being called someone's dog, just, just explodes. Unrepentant fury. The the indignity of the notion of of. Wait, can you, hold hold on. Let's disconnect my. Yeah, if it's being choppy, just get rid of it, man. We'll deal with that later. Yeah, let me do that real quick. Um, can you repeat that though? About the. Uh, yeah, as 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 he says the phrase. Why uh, is he doing this to me? As he says the phrase, Connor's dog. Just something deep, deep inside you, just bursts in this primal rage. Uh, the sheer indignity, the notion of being collared, of being controlled, of being someone's plaything you just can't take it it's it's, it's completely inimical to who you are so in that moment i don't even see anything and at that point Zerif can't even see him anymore as somehow the two forges of fire have just erupted into flames that are even scorching the roof of the forge oh shit and you just see my eyes floating like just just within the flames as as i turn towards Zerif and say, and, and I say to him, I serve no one but the will of my own. To imply that implies that you know not of who you're dealing with at this moment. I care not for your pride. I care not for your ego. For someone who isn't of fire elemental origin, you blow a lot of hot air if I do say so myself. We work together on this task. Do not cross me again. And then the flames slowly cool down and the room starts to, you start to see me emerge from the top of the flames again. I, I look at him and stave off all desires to insult him further. And I, I just say, <laughs> about time. And I turn around and make sure that everybody else is okay and see if anyone has uh, also seen this explosion of fire. Sure if, if, I may, so. if I may, uh, I haven't been in the room this whole time. I was on my way to the forge. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to now be entering the forge just as that altercation uh, <laughs> happened. So I technically don't know any of that went down. Um, so I walk in, I walk into the forge and uh, I immediately kind of start like fanning in front of my face. Like, why is it so smoky in here? What happened? Uh, just, uh, <clears throat> just some, uh, just a little bit of back and forth, if you will. And from within my flames, I just yelled, he's an ass. <laughs> I, I once again smirk and I say, all right, all right, down boy. And I start to walk out of the foundry. <laughs> after, be, after him called me boy, I let out a, I let out a roaring growl. That even starts to awaken G. Eric a bit. Ah, uh, hello, hello. What? 
Yeah. Pink. Uh, roll intimidate. Nice, nice. It's the one. Oh, it is. <laughs> Oof. All three of you, not the czar, uh, are temporarily shaken. Cool. This be sealed. Very deep, very, very primal growl that he just lets out. Almost take an involuntary step back. What the fuck was that? Uh, my my tail curls around one of my legs, like not necessarily between my legs, but just like kind of curls around, like tucking closer to my body. And then uh, actually, I say, uh, okay, guys, maybe maybe we just need to take a deep breath. Uh, you know. This we still have we still have to go after Connor. My thoughts exactly. Uh do we travel out tonight or do we uh do we rest for the rest of the night and go in the morning? I think uh G Eric probably needs the sleep. And I walk over and I pull him out of the water and um, I, uh, I get off me. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I, I don't let him I don't let him push me away. Uh, I take him and I put him over towards the table. I'm gonna end up back here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we should pick up in the morning. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to wait for the water breathing anyway, unless you guys want to try to swim. So I don't I don't no, like please. when I vote no. I don't like when they fight. Uh, me either, buddy. Me either. All right. So if you guys are gonna rest while you're there, uh, do roll three of whatever your hit die is. Add your con bonus and add your level. So start with Azar. Okay. All so, right. I'm clear. Clear my conditions real quick. Go ahead and roll three d ten plus five, Azar. Okay, so it is slash R space. Yes. 3D10. It's slash R. We said. Yeah, you can do slash R or slash roll. It takes both. Okay, I'm just getting ready for mine. All right. Well, that puts you back to full. Perfect. Like that. Perfect. Uh. Eric? Yeah. Or 3D8? Really? Gunslingers for D10s, too. Is it just 3D8? Oh, man. How did we fuck that up? It's D10 for you, too. Is it 10? Yeah. Don't give me more dice ever. Yeah. Okay, so uh <laughs> back that was, to full that was good. Roll two D three. And we'll retroactively add hit points because we short as you inadvertently. Also I wanna add that Curtis's laugh made that situation a little bit funnier. So thirty-four max. Okay. When I think you're D eight. Yes. I believe so. Uh let's so see three D eight. Three D eight plus four. One? Oh, four. So yeah, one, 18. one con and three levels, so eighteen. Alright. Work yourself back up. And so am I back at my max thirty? I think 33 was your max. 30, 33, yeah. Correct. You can't go over. You can just put you at max. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, is there a few or Same thing. 3d8 uh, plus 4. Plus 4? 11. That's okay. That right. puts yeah, me at max. You're over. Yeah. You're good, so. Great roll, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
get it out of the way now. Ah, uh, dude, there's no getting it out of the way. We're feast or famine. We're not. <laughs> we're not one than the other. Mine are just red. Just not good. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I lose health. <laughs> Terrible. I wish you rolled a one, two, three plus four. That'd have been awesome. <laughs> All right, so it it takes over the course of eight hours of just not pushing yourselves crazy or anything to get all that back. So we'll assume a couple hours have gone by, and uh, Polly kind of walks back in, proud of himself, still in his little college professor garb, and he's like, uh, "All right, we're doing a little pub crawl. What's up?" Yeah, Polly, we sure are. Polly, I uh, really don't think we need to give Jerick any more. We really need to focus on this uh, pretty arduous task we have ahead of us. Can we maybe keep it chill tonight? Focus is tomorrow's problem. Drinking is tonight's problem. Say, uh, ah, come on, man. Little hair with a dog never hurt nobody. Exactly, and I'm about to down the whole wolf. <laughs> make, a, make a sense motive roll, Quinn. Have him back by 11, swear to God. Which one? You haven't seen this sensitive, sincere side of Polly before. You shouldn't, but you believe him. I just kind of shake my head and say, I'm not your dad. Do what you want. Come on, boys. Little revelry. We'll wind down. We'll sort our issues out. Little pissing matches over. No burn ceilings. No burn bridges. First round's on what? Quinn, and he just walks off. <laughs> what 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 better way to put out these fires of hostility than with drinks of liquid friendship? Yeah, I tag along on this actually. <laughs> oh, he's he's going around. I sit in my fire and lay down. Um, yeah, he's like uh, <laughs> uh, very like. Someone who looks very similar to Eric, except blonde, walks in and just winks at you guys. Uh, like, comes in from that direction. He's like, yo, Bucky! Over it! <laughs> Alright, so is ours gonna yeah. stay there? Quinn, what about you? What are you doing? Uh, wherever my bed is, I'm just gonna go lay in bed, and I'm done for the night. I'm going to try and mentally prepare for the adventure that awaits. Um, but albeit that I seemed a little disappointed in uh, our half of our team going off to uh, philander about for the evening, um, I am going to, uh, I'm actually kind of a little bit like, there's a little bit of a smirk on my face. And uh, I seem much more calm than probably normal. Would you jerk off or something in the woods? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not there. <laughs> no, that's cool. I, I, love, okay. I love how Quinn has these emotions, but it's behind a mask, so none of us... <laughs> yeah, no one can see it. Like, <laughs> we just see the mask. Quinn has this like, <laughs> shit-eating grin. Like, ah. <laughs> Alright, so as the three of you are you know, reveling dealing with all these patrons in the tavern. Uh, somewhat familiar face, kind of. See him peek his head in. Uh, you recognize Lucius Otterby, the father of Amelia, who, um, you remember the rogue, Geralt, the guy whose body you fished out. Uh, that was his fiance. Uh, and he sort of stands a few feet away from you guys awkwardly, quite literally hat in hand, uh, for a few minutes. Uh, does that guy want to drink with us? Let's get that guy to drink with us. Hey, guy, come over here. You're drinking with us right now. Come on, come uh, here. 
please no it's it's a weak night uh i just uh i wanted to thank you again uh for the recovery of my my son-in-law and uh thank you for the efforts you undertook i i know you didn't have to it it, it means a great deal to my daughter i've uh I've been working on something as as somewhat of a recompense. Uh, if you would, if if the four of you could could come by in the morning, uh, it'll be worth your while. Call it a gift. I insist. We would love that, sir. But what is your name? Ah, uh, Lucius. Lucius Arabi. Lucius, we are incredibly um, sorry for uh, the loss of your soon-to-be son-in-law, and we will gladly uh, come show our faces uh, if it is something that could bring you even more closure to the situation. That would that would be good. I uh, just come by my house, and he'll he'll sort of. Uh... Give you loose directions and and to, he'll say thanks again and make his leave okay so have a good night out. sir walks out his older guy like late 50s not a not very big on the whole tavern thing makes his way out i i look down at my close to empty mug and i reflect on um, that feeling that I once had with the loss of life and how in a different circumstance even maybe Lucius could push himself forward and not have to spend so much time worrying about burying the dead and be able to continue driving forward as I not only did but had to just not long ago being trapped and a Rubik's Cube of sorts. <laughs> and then I take a nice long last swig of that drink. Ah, that a boy. Don't don't look so sad in your cups. It's there's no point in it, you know? You just celebrate life as it comes at you now. There's always time for morning later. <clears throat> And morning will come. Their morning will come, but that's tomorrow me's problem. Polly, let's get more. <laughs> Used to be a poet. You know that? You got, I should. You got away with words, Eric. I mean that. And the kind of like wraps one arm around your head like this. Thanks, Polly. I always thought I did too. It's why yeah. I was it's why I was so good at my first job. Nice. My first job, I was uh, like a janitor or something. It's a little complicated. You wouldn't get it, but what was I saying again? Yeah, let's get that some drinks. We're drinking. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. All right. Bah, bah, bah. He like starts a Congo, like an impromptu Congo line or Congo line. No, oh, we're we're following every step of the way. Fuck it, I'm just leaving. Oh, I can babe. just hear those goopy little plap sounds all yeah, the way over to, here. To the beast, too, like squish, 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 squish. But he's in human form, so yeah. he just didn't get his feet. It's, it's, it's just, fading. There's just like a slime trail line. Why does he keep doing that? Is he getting bigger? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh. There we go. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Anything else you guys want to do in there? No, I, uh, after a few more, I just kind of, uh, haphazardly wander my way back into the forge and kind of just, uh, fall asleep sitting up on this bench facing Azar with my, uh, shield over my stomach and my, my sword pointed at the ground, my hand on the hilt. Not in like a on it isn't holding it like I'm gonna swing it, but have my hand rested on like a, a gear shift, if you will, and just kind of leaned up against the wall. Which which door do you take to get there? Uh, I take uh, this is a back door is that a window right here? The white ones are the doors. The white ones are the doors, like this one right here. 
Oh, the all oh, the white ones. Okay. Uh, I I kind of take a I, I take this one. Uh, the one going more north. As uh as you're on your way back, uh, somebody drunkenly who look like they were taking a piss over here, uh, stumbles into you a little bit and okay. starts to walk past. As you get a couple steps apart, uh, you hear, uh, Hey, Misty, you dropped something. Uh, make a perception check as he walks sure. away around the side of the building. Like, mm -hmm. he's, like, gone. Uh, you see a small, like, leather bundle kind of a few feet ahead of you, sitting on the ground. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go, I guess I go pick it up. Alright. You open I it kneel up. down. Vision's a little shaky, but yeah, I, I open it up. Uh, inside are four passes. Uh, all of them, like, uh, handwritten invitations almost, but they have letterhead. And mm -hmm. each of them says, uh, Please, at your earliest convenience, join us at Porch's most illustrious tavern and card room. And there's a iconography. It's a silver disc hall on the back of it. Gotcha. And as you as you study the invitation, you see each one of them is like a voucher for like a hundred gold. Okay. In like chips. Got gotcha. It smells like urine. <laughs> That's just you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, I put that. I just slide the the um, invitation in, in my breastplate and uh, uh, just I, I don't even realize what it is truly, and I just slide my breastplate and make my way into the into the foundry or to the forge where I slump over. Well, well, Polly is doing his little conga line too, uh, for the second time apparently, because that 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 little ball of energy just does not stop. Uh, I'm I'm trying to put on the most uh, drunken but 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 beautiful one man performance I possibly can for the whole tavern. <clears throat> All right, hit us. Uh, so he doesn't know what he's saying. He's kind of gonzo right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably talking about uh uh how there are dragons and they're they're not they're not very good but what i did is i took this gun and i shot them and i'm just <laughs> waving it around <laughs> take another drink <laughs> it'd be nobody, nobody knows what it is either so they're like oh, uh, yeah cool right, right. yeah it, it is cool i'm cool I am great, <laughs> and my friends are great, and we're going to kill 14 more dragons before we're done with our journey in the underground area, and you're all going to love it, and you're all going to be safe and sound, and Polly, get me another one, baby. That's right. Jump up on one of the tables, like, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> and it'll just pass out, like fall forward and pass out on the table. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna follow suit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fall kind of off the table, basically face first in the most comical position I can think of, just ass up in the air, uh, just gonzo, just not like four sheets to the wind, you know? Conveniently in a small puddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we will mm -hmm. jump forward to the following morning. As somehow, as promised, Eric wound up right back in the fountain. It's a great way to stay hydrated after a long night of drinking. <laughs> All right, well, the day is yours, right, what gents. What time is it? What time do you want to wake up? Uh, let's do like um seven forty two a.m. Yeah, crack of dawn ish, like seven six seven. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I kind of stir from my seated position. Um, 
kind of checking myself to make sure that Bazaar didn't hurt me in my sleep or do anything weird to me. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, I I fumble around my breastplate and I uh, I reach in and I, I I can feel the four passes um, from the night before. Um, that like leather bound satchel that I found or that leather bundle that I found before, but I, uh, I just kind of pat it down and hold on to it. And I say, uh, <clears throat> I guess it's time for us to, uh, go get another dose of that water breathing and, and get back to it. All right. Uh, I'm not inside the forge at this point. I'm outside already stretching, ready to go. I completely ignore uh, Zerif. Oh, 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 we got to see Luther Vandross. <laughs> uh, oh, hi. I'm awake. Okay. Hey, we got to go see... Um, what, what's his name? Uh, uh, Lorian Tobblebop or whatever. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, while we were at the bar... Uh, at, while we were at the bar... Um, the tavern uh, a man named uh lucius rb came and spoke to us uh, azari was the um <clears throat> the uh the rogue that we pulled from here and uh it was going to be his son-in-law uh, and so he would like all four of us to go to his home he has a bit of a gift for us before we shove off i'll go i'll go find quinn and i'll meet you guys there Polly, you remember what he said the directions were, right? You know I'm dyslexic, right? Yep. Yeah, well, that does Isn't that for reading, Polly? Yeah, he said go to number 8 on the map. Uh Oh, sure enough, there's a there's a big number 8 there. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go find Quinn. We're going to go meet at that big old number 8 that he drew on our map here. Uh I look at Azar and I say um he specifically requested all four of us if you have any reluctance. I simply get up. I turn towards the door of the forge. I give one quick glance over to Zerif. And I let, let out a smirk out the corner of my mouth. But it's almost it's a it's very uncomforting, and I walk out. Uh, on your way out, you just see me giving you a thumbs up. I should say, <laughs> I, I I'm taken aback by this. Um, due to the previous night's drinking, I've kind of forgotten the exchange that we had previously um, from the alcohol. So I'm kind of taken aback by this, and uh, even a little sore that Bazaar is being so standoffish to me at this moment. But I just put it away and push on out, out of the foundry. Sorry, I have a visitor. I see. Jump. Jesus Christ. Hi, right, Quinn. Hey, Quinn. Quinn, we gotta go see a dude about some stuff. You in? I like stuff. Let's go. Let's go get stuff. <laughs> you said it's a gift. I know you like you like gifts, right? I mean, it depends. But yeah, I'm up for checking it out. Let's go. Where, Wonderful. Uh, is everyone coming? I I hope so. He said to bring everybody, but I you know I'm not going near those two right now. They're getting a little too spicy. Uh, as always. Uh yeah. As you say that, I, I think uh, Azar walks out, and I'm slightly behind him, and we just kind of come up the rear and just are walking slowly behind you. I see that uh, Azar looks just even remotely annoyed and i'm like hey uh let's go get some stuff jerick said there's stuff let's go get stuff for the first time i actually don't respond to quinn i look in his direction and for the first time i've let my hair out from the bun and let it fall down over my shoulder showing the length and it's just just past shoulder length and i continue walking all right to laurel snapplebees <laughs> Uh, Laurel Yannies. <laughs> Up on the top of the hill. All right. Make your way over mm -hmm. to Otterby Manor. 
uh, up the top there. And you see him uh, in a in a steel worker's apron, uh, walking past a trough full of steaming water. And he's like, "Ah, good, good, you made it." Um, uh, as I said to the others last night, uh, "Who's your other friend?" Oh, uh, he he had somewhere to be. He's uh, he's more of a drinking buddy, less the uh, less the adventuring type, if you know what I mean. I understand. You know, I used to be an adventurer. Into... Never mind. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to sincerely thank uh, each of you for your efforts above and beyond when it came to recovering Geralt. Uh, as a token of, of my thanks and of Amelia's thanks, I took the liberty of Asking around about your preferred tools, and uh, I'm not quite the metal worker I once was, but I made you uh, some improvements, let's just say. And uh, as you guys look into the trough, you see a sword cane, a long sword, uh, the barrel of a small pistol, and a short sword, this time with a small hilt. And uh, you all have a plus one, or uh, rather a masterwork version of your weapons. For free. Woo! Uh, nice. Which I will add to your sheets, one at a time. Which effectively right now means they get plus one to hit. Nice. Indeed. Uh, I bow and say thank you for the kind gift. I appreciate it. And then I turn around and I walk away. <laughs> nice. Um, I I also uh, take the sword. I, I kind of measure it from hilt to blade, look over it, and uh, I thank him again for uh, you, you, Lucius, you did not have to do this. You know, it was, uh, it was the honorable thing for us to do to bring him back, and I can only hope that Amelia is healing at this point in time. Uh, and I sheath the sword, um, admiring the masterwork, but I, I sheath, sheath the sword and uh, look at him solemnly and just kind of nod to him. As Zeref stops talking and I'm slowly walking away, I look back and I say, you did have to do this. We brought that body back. Yeah. I'm going to walk up saying nothing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna, No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I walk up saying nothing, Um, bend over, grab my sword cane. Not even looking at the gentleman at this point. I unsheathed it ever so slightly, and you see the blade start burning a a brightish, like a brightish orange, as if I'm using scorching weapons. And I nod, and I nod in thanks to him, and I turn around towards Quinn. I turn to Jeric, uh in a nervous uh, kind of uh, expression uh, to see if he could break some of this tension. <laughs> oh my god, this barrel is exquisite. I didn't even know you knew how to work with firearms, old man. This is amazing. This is like this is this is stuff that you know the 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 haves and only the haves, if you know what I'm saying, might have at uh, back in Alkenstar. So uh kudos. Uh, I knew a guy who knew some guys and who still have back in the day and uh yeah, that's another story for another time. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll suffice. Oh, it's it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to make sure everyone stays safe with this thing. Nice. I, I once again thank Lucius, and uh, I turn back. And uh, can we make the assumption that we, on our way over, got the water breathing, or do we need to shimmy all the way back, or we just hand wave? Yeah, it? I would say you probably hit the temple first, and then went up there. Okay. Gotcha. Meanwhile, the entire time I, I have assembled the barrel in there, I'm just spinning the gun like the whole way there. <clears throat> nice. Happy as can be. Like quick in the dead style. 
Uh, j like, like, uh, so you know that scene in, uh, I forget which Metal Gear it was, where, like, Ocelot's just spinning <laughs> yeah. the revolver over, yeah, it's, it's like that kind of thing. I feel like that was Snake Eater. Engravings have no tactical value whatsoever. All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get this freaking desert on the road. All right, so let, we make the assumption that we just forego all the details about getting all the way back here. We're just at the mouth. What's up, you guys? If you want to explore the other parts of the cave, or you want to proceed forward first? We can, I, I'm going to proceed forward. Right. I don't think yeah, we brought any, uh, any, any way to traverse down that deep, dark hole where we dropped a body and a rock and no sound came out. No, drop the body? No, through the body, yes. Okay. Also, if we're gonna if we're gonna be semantic like that, we didn't do it. Azar did it. Correct. <laughs> Speaking of which, anybody who wants to ponder the hole as you walk past it again, you can roll uh, engineering or geography. Sure. Why not? Well, I love pondering. I pondered. Yep. It's a hole. It's a hole. Uh. Real quick, as I as I'm pondering and I realize that it's just a hole, uh, I do have <laughs> a uh, I I want to cast my uh, oh, there, spell there. Mage Hand, and uh, so what Mage Hand does is uh, I can point to something, and essentially I have like telekinesis up to fifteen feet, and I just want to take I want to point to a little pebble and just like flick it into the hole. No now, granted, sound. no one else, no one else knows that. Like that's like a particular spell. They just see me like point to this little rock, and uh, the rock just moves as I'm walking by. I don't really say anything. Is Mage Hand invisible in Pathfinder? I know it's not in D and D. Um, I was looking it up. It doesn't say, but if I had my way about it, it would be invisible. Yeah, no, you don't have to. It's invisible in Pathfinder. I just in, in Baldur's Gate. I know it's a. It has a representation, probably, so you can move and stuff. But it's it says in this, it's, gotcha. you just point your finger and move stuff. Yeah. Hmm. They fear this man. <laughs> G. Eric, you think uh, whole miles and miles and miles deep, probably connected to the dark lands, probably like the base layer, which technically is like the the highest layer. To the denizens of the dark lands, it would be like the the lowest. Uh, it's called Narvath, and it's a pretty bad place. It's not somewhere you want to go without uh, an army or three at your back, more than likely. Uh, seeing nobody else really reacting to the hole, then I'm just gonna like, you know, do do that do that meme where like the guy looks over and then like sees some stuff going on and just looks back forward and just minds his own business, keeps walking forward. Yeah. I would, we're gonna we're gonna not tell the group about that one. I would make a joke if you had dark vision or if you had the goggles on or something. Uh, actually, do you're wearing the goggles? Roll perception. Oh boy! All right. This is the uh, one. Gotta be a twenty. Uh, <laughs> doesn't count. Doesn't count. Close. <laughs> There's all kinds of wild shit down there. Dinosaurs and stuff. I was gonna have you see like a T-Rex eat a eat a skulk or something. Uh. Just just off of vitals, you couldn't actually see the outlines. You just see this massive, massive thing swallow something else. But no, it had to be a net mm -hmm. twenty. So it's down there. All right, goes back in the desert again. It's that odd, dusky sort of perma permanently dusk, weird setting. Uh, what's like the temperature? I know there's a little wind in here, right? Well, there's no wind, actually. There's no wind. What's the temperature like? Uh, Wait, there's no wind? There was tumbleweeds rolling around. Yeah, yes. there was yeah, a slight wind, wind last time. There was a slight breeze last time. Curious. Okay, curious. Gotcha. What's yeah. the temperature like? Not as hot as you'd expect a desert to be. And not okay. the slightest bit arid. Okay. Actually kind of pleasant. All right. Little little Goldilocksy. Uh, well. In fact, the uh, 
the lack of substantial breeze has left the foot trail from at least one of the previous groups intact, as you can see on the map. Okay. Do we do we see which direction it's going? That's I'm that. assuming that's that trail, correct? That's that yellow looking trail. That's that trail? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I assume we all notice it, and so uh, yeah, I look to the group and I say, okay, are we. Uh, uh, I guess we should follow this line. Up up and I go, let's do the damn thing. And just cool. start moving. I would like to, as we start moving, I would like to cast some an instrument. And? Uh, yeah, I'd like to cast some an instrument and uh, summon a lute and attempt to uh, play it as we move. <laughs> All right, make a perform check. Cool. Uh, now, my perform, I have oratory selected as the perform. Is it, am I still going to get the same bonus or no? No, it'd be separate. It'd be separate. Okay, and so I just... In this case, uh, just... Uh, hold on one second. What do you mean to roll? Let me see what, this, what the modifier is real quick. Okay. Uh, perform, 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 perform. Duration one minute for a level, so three minutes. Okay. Is charisma. So 1d20 it, it, plus four, successful. Zach. So 1d20 plus four? Okay. Yeah. 20. Yes. This is the one. <laughs> Boy, that sounds like a real good song. <laughs> it sounds like a third grader trying to play the recorder. Yes, so I just... I, I play it ones. really poorly as we walk for at least three full minutes. Excellent, Dave. Thank uh, you. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't take you very far, obviously. I, I ref changed the scale to reflect more accurately how big this place is. Sure. Uh, is there any way that I could play, or I could, uh, without using a full, since we're not really in combat, can I use a, a level one spell without fully using it? Is that possible for just story's sake? No. Okay. If it's got a slot, if you use it, you use it. Okay. Cool. So I, uh, yeah, I strum this thing. Uh, I hold it incorrectly and strum it kind of upside down, and I guess we start walking. I hiss, and I put uh, one finger for each hand in my ears. Oh, I just there was a hero the named Ragnar the Red. He just keeps singing badly. <laughs> <laughs> As we uh, traverse deeper into the dungeon, I say absolutely nothing, but there's a very, very heavy, uneasy tension about me as compared to previous excursions. Hmm. Noted. Yeah, I continue pushing forward uh, with loot in hand uh, right past Quinn, and then the loot just disappears out of my hands. <laughs> As you pass by me, uh, I just grumble a little bit under my breath. And I continue pushing forward until about this spot right where this uh, kind of, you know, landmass here is. And uh, yeah, I just kind of stand and, and observe it for a second. Indeed, I just Eric, walk past Zura. Eric, are you standing there next to him? Yeah. Make a perception check. You just one. You just stand there. Or are you poking around a little bit? Uh me? Yeah, you. Uh, yeah. Let's poke around a little bit. We're being we're being awfully quiet. Okay. Is there's a there's this uh, a little bit more of that purple and red kind of craggy scrub brush, just like sitting there. Uh, and there's a few bones sticking up out of the sand on various places. And as you get closer, uh, you realize it's one of those four-armed things that you saw in the cages earlier. And at your presence, it begins to stir. Almost imperceptibly at first. You see the grains of sand start shifting, like. 
Uh, guys? As the bones snap back together, and the reanimated skeleton of one of these creatures rises up. Roll for initiative, bitches. That's a big boy. Yes, sir. Damn. Um, <clears throat> as we get into the situation, um, I take the battle plans that I had previously thought of in my mind, and I can see them fully taking place as I uh, as I see the battle start. Uh, real quick, is there any cover nearby? Not really. <laughs> okay. Feet away, there's the base of that mountain, but you're pretty much you're within spitting. Come on, G. Eric, thing. we're in the, we're in a desert, man. Yeah, there could be like sand dunes or boulders or something. I don't know. Uh, this is going to take a moment. Don't worry, guys. I'll bring up the rear. Oh, no. God. Darn it. Dang it. Dag nabbit. Oh, my so. gosh. The language on display. Uh huh. You're telling me. I look around and uh, I look at Zareff and I say, did you just say Dag Nabbit? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm 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 doing a little air guitar. Oh. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Made a small boo boo when I assigned some of these. Hold on. All manually. I don't like that one. Jesus. <laughs> oh, that one's not real. Ooh. Yeah, that's yeah. You can't. It's do not on a tracker. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a tracker. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you can't do. Yeah. At that point, he has future sight, and that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At that point, he can he can tell what what's deep in Azar's heart right now. <laughs> he can tell what Azar had for lunch with that roll. <laughs> It's just cold. <laughs> I... Almost, boys. Almost. Hold on. I mean, we're chilling. Yeah, we're chilling. Yeah. That's a lot of skeletons. Spooky skeleton. Sir? Look at the bones. There's there's a lot of skeletons. There's about to be four more if you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. You smell what I'm stinking. So he's good. Yeah. It's okay, Polly. You are, can eat me when we these, die. Do we do we have like a a marker for all of these, or are they just in that one picture of the? Oh no no no! You only see the one. Hey, in character, you're only aware of the one. Ah, okay. Sorry. But uh. There's no way. Cat's out of the bag, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Wait, that's how much I got with a not crit fail, no. No, no. <laughs> what true? Uh, next win. That's our... Yeah, just next time, tell us out of character to close our eyes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you Just keep hearing. Yeah, for real. Uh, out of character, no peeking. <laughs> We're on the honor system. Mm -hmm. I could just put question marks next time instead of names, but you want yeah. Quinn on the honor system? Good luck. Yeah, right. Good luck with that, boys. Uh, okay, math looks correct. All right, Quinn, you're up. Okay, well, um, so we'll, we'll obviously... assume for the purposes of this fight that you ignore the 50-foot thing. One square is five feet, and it's standing next to his R, or uh, next to Eric right now. Hello. Okay. Um, I am... So if I want... Let's see, how far would it be for me to get behind you, Eric? 
three, five, six, uh, maybe it's too far. Um, five, I'm going to. Uh, it's only twenty five. Well, this is twenty five feet. It's only fifteen to get behind me. Yeah. We're we're assuming that it's five. That it's five feet still. Yeah. For, for combat. Ah, okay. I'm going to move five feet. Oops, sorry. I'm going to move five feet this way. I'm going to pull out my sword and uh, I am going to. Well, I will say, for expediency's sake, you guys are in a dungeon. You you know danger is here. You probably already had your primary weapons out. Ah, okay. Uh, well, then I will. <laughs> let's see here. I will pop my arcane pool. Okay. And I, I believe that's all I can do on the first one, correct? Uh, no, that's only in a surprise round. You're, you're ah, good. okay. You, that's I a swift will action. Pop... You can still make a standard and a move. Okay. I will uh, I will go back into my, you know, my two-finger kind of focus mode, and I will uh, just uh, calmly say, illusion of calm. And then, you know, my person starts to kind of have that, like, flutter effect to my uh, my character. Very nice. That ends my turn. You want to move behind him too? Um, no. I'll just I'll just sit right next to Zareph. Okay. He's just wigging out next to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like he's like like uh, rubber banding, like in an MMO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. All right, but more it? like ethereal rather than like computer glitchy. Right yeah. on. Azar, you're up. Um. What's my max like distance I can move again? Like it's it's my max moving speed, correct? Correct. Or if that's all you do, you so. can double that. He just boots it back to the fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, like, bitches. Clicks the boots and goes. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you no see the flame, like home you see the flame so away from you guys. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> So Azar sees this skeleton being in, doesn't he, face doesn't change at all. He still has the same intense look in his eyes. He makes his way to this point here. And going to take out my sword cane. And hold on. I got to click my way over. Using the power attack, fierce focus, and scorching weapons. So let me hit those. And then what do I have to turn? For Furious 4, so I have to turn that on? Uh, no, that's always on. Uh, as long as you have the power attack off on you. But the power attack is the one I have to turn off. Yeah, you got to toggle that. Right. There you go. Right. And then you make the actual weapon and attack. And then... With the sword cane. Yeah. And then... With one hand... And just with like pure... Anger behind this swing, he goes and tries to take off one of the arms of the uh, the skeleton there. Um, where am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 16 hits. Uh, so the sword cane is uh, piercing only, you kind of have to like stab with it. Okay, so uh, I stab it at the, the shoulder joint. Righteous, and it kind of it reacts silently, teeth chittering, not uh, not pleasantly, but it didn't. It's not like you bored it or anything. Uh, you you definitely hit it, but it didn't. Surprisingly, like not as hard for as much juice as you put into that strike. And then also, is that still get the plus one fire damage? Correct. All right. That's my turn. He just stands if just there. Oh, don't I get on um, flank too because of GR or no? You do, but you hit with the 16 anyway, so. Okay. All good on that front. Okay, and it's its turn. Uh, focused on Gierk, it's going to go ahead and attempt to break him with all four of its claws. 
there are so many skeletons on this list for me that I'm like trying to find the right one. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, all miss. I think they all miss. Yeah. So he's just like he's able to dip, duck, dive, dodge, and dive out of the way. Yeah. Now who has future sight? <laughs> <laughs> And that will end its turn. Oh. That, okay, yeah, that, uh, that'll end its turn. I had the wrong one. Where's number two at? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fucking lost. That's what you get for trying to fuck us. Four. Okay, so that one's on the scene. You guys are going to be able to see it now. Layers, man, layers. As another one kind of like starts skittering its way through the sand towards you. Okay. Uh... Hold on, it's not quite your turn yet. Yep. I see another one pop from over here. Mm -hmm. All right. And now we're up to Zeref. Okay. How much uh, when... I'm assuming this is, uh, I should probably know this, but when something is a touch range, that means I have to be within five feet? Yes. Okay, so. Would unless, that also... Unless it says range touch, in which case it has an actual range increment. So it says range touch for this. Ah, what is it? Clarion call, like a wand of clarion call. I'm being difficult tonight. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have swinging no, at no, it. No, Go no. Ahead. This is this is a regular touch ranged with a D touch, like okay. uh, like mm -hmm. like Ray of Frost that Joe has. Sure. That is a, an attack that resolves against touch AC, mm -hmm. but done from range instead of from point blank from five feet. This is straight oh. up like a fi any creature that you're within five feet of that you can touch with it. Strange. Okay, it's strange to me. Um, Oh, okay, okay. All right. I think I, I think I got it. Yeah. It's just strange to me because of its description, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because it's like great distance, but can't be used with great distance. So that's fine. No worries. Okay. Uh, uh, Skelly Boy, uh, to my bottom left. Um, if I move, if I even take a five foot step south, uh, he'll get an uh, opportunity attack on me. And if that okay. was a real spell and not attached to a wand, the act of casting yeah. it would provoke because not the touch component of it, but the casting part of it would. But yeah. since since it's a wand, you're not considered unarmed. Okay. And so it doesn't provoke. Okay. Uh, no worries. I'm just going to go ahead and swing um, my uh, short but sword, my master short I have sword. To, I have to butt in his rules lawyer here. Mm -hmm. Drawing the wand would take your move action, and that would provoke. That would give that would give an opportunity attack, right? Yes. Only it only okay. can it can only swing once. It can't swing with all four. But sure, no, no worries. Okay, I'm still just gonna go ahead and try to swing at uh, the at uh, I'm gonna swing at his at his uh, pelvis actually with my sword. Let's see what we can do with that. Break his hips, man. That's what I'm working on here. So you without the clarion call, or you're doing the clarion call too. Without the clarion call, without the clarion call. No, nope. right. just gonna swing at him. Yep, just so gonna swing at him. All right, and let's go ahead and do that. All right. And same thing as you as you rake the bones, it definitely recoils from the hit, but for as hard as you just laid into this thing, it doesn't seem... I don't know, like... I didn't quite shrug it off, but... You, know, you heard it, but nowhere near as much as you should have. Okay. And then I am going to... I will end my turn there. I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, boat maker. The hero is often the character in a story that saves the day. This battle is that story. I am that character. This cacophony of calcium started this fight, and it's high time to end it already. 
This won't be a repeat of last time. One shot's all it's going to take to make it crumble again. Here comes the thunder. Here comes the hero. Uh, and I'm just going to shoot this guy that's like, you know, right next to me. Beautiful. Does a 22 hit? Uh, absolutely, as you blow it to pieces. It... Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Chase, quick question. Are these things unarmed? Uh, technically, no. Bro, what is not what is not on? Oh, okay. They have claws. They're not. They're not bare hands. There's talons on those claws. Plus, plus, they have multiple arms. Can't be unarmed if you got multiple. Yeah. Arms. This one's this one's not armed anymore. Oh, the force. <laughs> right yeah. Whatever. Technically, this one. Whatever force that was holding it together just like crumbled completely as all the pieces loosely fall <laughs> to the side. Uh, and then with the move action, we're gonna we're gonna reload real quick. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, hold on. Illusion hold on. Of... Yeah, you can't see. Oh. You guys can't see though. Let me just let me just put them all in the right layers. So... Number three. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so number seven is going to run up to his R, and that's going to use its entire turn. Number three is going to run up to Sir F, and is going to attempt to swing with a single claw. In one second, because I didn't program that. Plus one, one D4, right? Smash or swing. I don't think a ten's gonna do it. So it, it just not hit. Just walks up and like drunkenly stumbles as it tries to take a lazy swipe with one claw. Uh, two, three. That one's gonna go there. And back to Quinn. Okay. I am uh, going to move to the other side of Zeref to flank this guy here. Um, I am going to cast uh, Shocking Grasp. So in well, my sword not... hand, it just like... You, oh, to, wait, go to, ahead. To flank, you have to be on a diagonal to Zeref. So you'd have to be here. Ah, okay. Well, then... JK, I move there. Um, I run around just to flank. And so uh, once I'm on the other side, I cast Shocking Grasp. So my hand just becomes like electrified. And uh, I actually cast uh, Throw on my sword. And that would take one more from my Arcane Pool. So technically I've only used two. Out of the, what is it I have? Six? Yeah. So, um, let's see here. I'll go cast this shit. Uh, you can't cast and attack. If you, to, to properly spell strike is a full round action. Ah, uh, okay. Well then, I will cast. So well, you could, okay. you could do but it. I can. You, you could do it, uh, from... Where you were standing, I'm pretty sure number two was in range, if you're going to throw it. From over here. I can hit this guy? I'm pretty sure your range is 10 feet, isn't it? For the throne? Yes, actually. Yeah. You know what? Uh, benevolent God... All, almighty, almighty DM. <laughs> uh, I've already, I've already made this decision, and I don't feel like metagaming this. Um, so I'm gonna run around. I'm gonna cast Shocking Grasp. Uh, I technically could throw the Shocking Grasp, couldn't I? Nope. Or does that the the okay the, the attack? Yeah, like normally, like let's say next turn. Mm -hmm. so since you already have it casted, you could throw it, and it could proc on the sword when it hits, a hundred percent. But you can't cast and attack unless you're spell striking, and you can't spell strike if you've moved and like more than a five foot step. Which that was. I see. So you're I just see. you're just standing in place. It took an attack of opportunity at you and it missed. 
if it were possible it would have taken a second but it doesn't have the feet it lets us take a second when you cast it so you are standing there with shock and grasp ready to go and you can either throw at it or swing at it next turn as a as a uh actually that cast of opera uh the i i can't provoke if i'm uh if i've cast oh, illusion of calm, which i did yeah true 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 yeah so it technically but, doesn't it technically well, so still sees me over it's, here it's not that you can't provoke it's that uh provoking into the first like movement out of a threatened square does not provoke the first time but movement mm -hmm. through wood so the second that you that you walked through here 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 or here each of those has the opportunity to provoke since you're you were leaving a threatened square that was here okay god this game's so fucking complicated all right well That's then i can't maybe. shock and grasp it's fine <laughs> I can't shock and grasp, and uh, essentially, we'll just say that I, I look like I'm just charging that shit up. I end my turn. Okay. Right on. Back to Azar. Thank you for that. Yeah, upon, uh, upon hearing this, um, I guess, skeleton behind me, I let out another loud growl that's um loud enough for at least all the members of the party to hear. And can I just roll for intimidation to see if it does anything to anyone? Absolutely. I am shaking. Oh my, no, not you guys. <laughs> Upon that roar, I make a, uh, you can audibly hear me go, <laughs> <laughs> As I'm now excited, I'm I, like, yeah, like Luffy's like little snicker laugh from uh, One Piece. As uh, I hear Azar just starting to go a little more feral, and then I am going to use scorching weapons to ignite my teeth on fire. Oh, oh fuck! And then I'm going to spin around and attempt to bite the skeleton in the skull. Well, you do so, and you chomp right through, killing it. Is it again, whatever force is holding these bones together, just like the like the marionette got its strings cut, and everything just collapses to the ground. Well done. And that would be my turn. Thank All right. You. I no, whisper. Notably, oh, they, they didn't under my breath even a little bit to the roar. All of the living organic members uh, noticeably did. <laughs> okay. Three. Numero dos. It is definitely a familiar sound at this point for me. <laughs> I'm kind of shocked, like all my memories coming back from the night of drinking and the exchange prior to that. I'm remembering exactly why Azar is acting this way. <laughs> and I am quite pleased. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, speaking of which, number two is going to go ahead and try to swipe at Zach again, or at Zeref again, rather. Oh my. Trash four will hit. Okay. Yep. All right. So again, just like you, you kind of like, and just as you as you slip out of the way, that fourth claw rakes low right across your belly. It just catches in one section of the chain. Gives it a little gash. That will end its turn. Oh, this one's dead. I should get it out of here. As well as seven is dead. Okay. Uh, two. Two, and it's going to take attempt to take a lone slash. Gonna hit. It definitely hit. Or five points. That will end its turn. And you're up. <clears throat> okay. All right. I am going to uh looking out at the battlefield, seeing uh, exactly the state that we're in, I am perfectly content with where we are um i could see that coin is charging up uh some sort of lightning um 
in front of me, I know that he's probably going to attack the one directly diagonal to the two of us. So I am going to once again swing at the one right below me in an effort to uh, finish it off fully. And I will uh, go ahead and try to attack. All right, see you. Uh, 21. Interesting. You make connection, and you slide down the bone with a grisly sort of slash. Mm-hmm. You physically feel it. Get that, that teeth-chattering sensation as it catches and scrapes and slides through the bone itself. But it's almost like, like you didn't even hit it. It just yeah. remains undaunted. still standing mm-hmm. at one measly health and uh, uh i and that ends my turn <laughs> uh, actually uh this is a teachable moment let me have mm-hmm. you go ahead and roll uh knowledge religion knowledge what religion religion got it teach that oh uh, yeah <laughs> I am God, it's and I teach God. <laughs> got, got damn tough bones on these things, let me tell you. <laughs> tough, man. Damn bones, man. Damn bones. Indeed. Tough bones. Milk drinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 2% drinking ass. All right. Eric, it's on home, brother. So last time a successful shot meant an unsuccessful threat to me was neutralized. Now it's time to help the others out. Luckily, I'm the one best equipped for this job. Since these skeletons clearly haven't seared the sensation of my sharpshooting skills into their skulls, I'll do it as many times as it takes. A czar might roar loudly, but it's nothing compared to the shout of my pistol. And I'm going to shoot the one to the right of uh, Zeref. All right. <laughs> Does that hit? Oh, yeah, it hits. Please, 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 please tell me, please tell me it magic bullets into another one. Oh, can, I, can I get a ricochet shot into another one? <laughs> roll, roll one d one hundred. If it's under ten, ten or less, I'll say yes. That's oh. under ten in, in golf rules. That's under ten. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it just comically gets heated into pieces as you strike it dead center in the breastbone, and it just blows apart. It can 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 like the shrapnel of it spread across like like the like the ping. Uh, for flavor, sure. Hell yeah! A little cloud of bone dust. This one was drinking lactate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Yeah, the shipping line is back in business. That's for sure. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Uh, uh, upon, upon seeing this thing just, just explode into uh, a billion hilarious dusty pieces, I am just genuinely mystified at this device and item that Jared carries around <laughs> with him. I have just swung at this thing twice as hard as I can and nothing has happened. And he just, it just, it, there's no words to describe. Zerf does not have I the mean, language to describe what happened. Out of character, just imagine a cannon firing at a series of bowling pins, like a literal, <laughs> like 1800s <laughs> ship cannon, like, <laughs> That's basically what happened. Right. Uh, okay. Number three, soundlessly, is going to attempt to destroy the threat in front of it once more. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll unload with all four. Uh, the, fi- the five hit. No, oh, I, no, I have 15 AC. I'm sorry. So no, does the no, five hit? It does hit, yes. It does hit, okay. Okay. It's five points of slashing damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, a flurry of arms in a cloud of dust is just swinging at me, and I'm doing the best I can to dodge it. But after hitting, getting hit by the first one, I kind of move slightly out of the way of the rest of them, luckily. 
kind of staggered me. Okay. Uh, number five steps up. That is its turn. And we are back to Quinn. Pop around. All Quinn. right. We're going to activate Spell Strike. So Shocking Grasp. I'm going to run in just like as sideways as I possibly can and just upswing both with Shock and Grasp attached to uh, my longsword. And so that's just uh, Shock and Grasp spell strike, correct? Roll? Yes. Uh, hold on, because you are flanking. Uh, nope, it's going to miss. I would like to take a chance at timely inspiration here. Absolutely. Um, and so I will uh, cast timely inspiration on Quinn, uh, giving him a plus one to that hit as well. All right, make a concentration check. Sure. That'll do. It goes off. Okay. Uh, when that does hit, Zeref will provoke three attacks of opportunity for doing so, but... Uh, I turn to Quinn, and I say, this is exactly how I drew up the battle. All targets <laughs> on me to prove my valor, to prove my strength to Azar, and to you as well. And all I can do is pray that you land the strike and you are inspired by my words. I do this for you. I do this for Jarek, and I also even do this for Azar as I uh, get slammed by one of them. Yeah, it's like, just as you're finishing up, just like... Oh. <laughs> as, he's, uh, as, he's getting, as he's getting slammed by this uh, bone brigade, uh, can I use my tail as a, uh, let's see, a spring-loaded sheath to throw him one of my uh, potion of cure light wounds? Yes. Uh Chase, real quick, uh, why is he getting why is he getting three attacks on him? Uh, he is currently he's under, only near two. He's under threat from three squares. Diagonal's, he's only under threat from two. Diagonal's still touching unless one of them is dead and I'm retarded. Yeah, the, the, this this one's gone. This one's gone. So <laughs> that no, one's no, supposed no, to be no, like no, that's no. the one that exploded. That, yeah, that's the one I shot at. I moved. I deleted the dead one. Oh, and, and okay. Okay. this, this one yeah. moved up and and stopped there. It it it. Technically, double move to get to that spot. Oh, okay, okay, never mind then. Is it rendered the last? Can, I, uh, can uh, I ask the DM how much health this thing has left? Just curious. Oh, it's dead as fuck after you hit it with. Oh, fuck strike. yeah! Yeah. No, you you were about to miss, and at the last second, Zeref just rouse rouse you into this like backswing, and you just sever it cleanly in half, and it fuck again yeah. loses that animating force and just crumbles. I have fallen to one knee at this point. Um, my health is dangerously low, and I look up to see Quinn successfully uh, uh, kill this in the way that he is about to describe, and I can do nothing but just hope that my words meant more than the than the kill that he just took. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty invigorated as I'm making the first swing, and it's actually, uh, I go to fake it as a feint, and swing a completely different way now that I'm more invigorated, cutting it in half. And uh, as I'm spinning around, like I said, I'll use my uh, tail as a spring-loaded wrist sheath, kind of a, a swift action, and I'll remove a, uh, a potion of cure light wounds from my pouch on my belt, and uh, I'll throw it to uh, Zeref. So it's almost like uh, one, one assistance begets another. Righteous. Uh, do I make any checks to catch it, or does it just bonk me on the head and fall in front of me? I think you can just catch it. Okay. It's not, not that extreme of circumstances. If it were across a small gulf or something, maybe, yeah. But Okay. That's some superhero-like shit right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, my time of inspiration worked. Hey. Bizarre. Yeah, Thanks oh, for yeah, that, by, dude. That was sick. By the way, he hit an 11. Plus, plus two, plus one, barely made it. Barely yeah. Well, it. you 
you benevolent DM'd it when you're like, he is, well, he's flanking. No, it just, you're like, you, you. <laughs> I was like right there. Yeah, yeah. And so, I couldn't tell with the with the previous rolls where the cutoff point was. I couldn't yeah. quite tell where it was, you know. It's this sand, dude. It made it a little slick for me to get a, a really good, you know, stomping, like stamp my foot down before the strike. It's the worst. Yeah, it's coarse. It, definitely it gets was, everywhere. Yeah, it definitely wasn't the beetle that ran past you before you swung. Definitely wasn't that. Uh, my cat light reflexes were maybe a little bit uh, sensory overloaded with that beetle. <laughs> it's Ooh, it's piece of saw a snake, but it was a pickle. <laughs> Oh, respectfully, fuck you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Azar. Quick question. Sure. Um, would any of my afterburner abilities be? Would I be able to use any of my, any of my afterburner abilities with that uh, giant skeleton there, or no? Giant skeleton is just for you guys to see what you're looking at. Oh, it's a regular size skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a portrait, so you can see it. Battles oh, down. so is there actually a skeleton on that side? Or yeah, no? so the only ones that are okay, actually thank you. on the map are just those three left. Thank God there isn't just a giant. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh yeah, he comes. Bro, I'm on this him. whole time. This whole time. Kurt's readying himself for the giant <laughs> one-on-one like the, battle. The, the, the fucking skeleton I love that he was about to go take that shit on by himself, though. That's yes, fucking sir. noble as hell. I like that a lot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. How how big is this rock formation? What what is this, a rock formation thing in between me and the skeleton? Oh, that's a dead ass mountain, dude. Oh, mountain. All right, so I gotta go all the way around. <laughs> dead all ass right. mountain. That's, that's 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 ten feet. All right, I'm gonna bust down this way. Twenty feet. All right, and I'll be thirty. All right, so ten. Oh, actually, I actually have to do no, that. No, no, no. Cool. Ignore the mountain. So, I, I, pretend you're not there. Pretend you guys are in like a fifty by fifty square. And that the squares are. Oh, feet. all right. Apparently, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. You're you're on oh. the same. You're you're technically here, but like, not not as like. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. That's where you guys are all standing. Is in that see, that spot. Please understand. In my head, I had a giant skeleton, and I was isolated <laughs> on the other side of a rock face. Respect. <laughs> He's ready to Johnny Cage Boro on the side of the mountain. I can love this shit, dude. <laughs> all right. Um, I will say this is a fun seeing this other a, skeleton. It's a fun, teachable moment as well. So, uh, you can you can charge one of them, and in doing mm-hmm. so, overrun is a charge, right? That's part of what afterburners can do. Mm-hmm. We haven't gotten to this yet. Uh, so it's basically you use your whole turn, you get to move up to double your speed. As long as there's nothing blocking you, and in this case there's not, and you you would get here, and you would attack as part of the charge. You get a plus two to the attack, but your AC goes down until next turn by two. But, let me read the specifics for Overrun real quick. So at any point, there's a standard action taken during your move or part of a charge. You could try to overrun the target moving through its square. There's some size restrictions on that, but you're within it, so it doesn't matter. Normally, this provokes an attack of opportunity. If you're using afterburners, it doesn't. Uh, let's see. So, and let's move. say in a situation where there's like two enemies in a line, can I overrun? Can I run through both of them or no? Uh, it's the first one that stops you, basically. That's only the Greek okay. hero Bovides. Indeed, Bovides, nuts, son. So I like um, Harry. I like Harry Paratestes a little bit more, but also a great oh. philosopher. All right, so go ahead and make a combat maneuver, a CMB, as in Bravo roll, but plus two. So, how do I do the plus two to it? We'll just add two. Uh, so let's see. 19 okay, plus two you. is twenty-one. Pretty sure that makes it. Just double check. Uh, got my maneuver defense. Where the fuck is it on the NPC? Oh yeah, CMD fifteen. Yeah, that makes it. So you are able to pass through its square. 
Uh, go ahead and roll uh one d six. Nope, I fucked that up. <laughs> what did I fuck up? It's all good. That's my favorite subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do this. Hey, you guys, click that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what I did. I'm stupid. My bad, guys. You, you did. You did r slash instead of slash. Oh, good. Uh, as as you run it down, and it just like the ground beneath it bursts into flame as you trample over this thing, and it crumbles again. The force that was holding it together just. And then, and then there were two. And then, and then, yes, and then. Right, it's gonna burn all its movement, and it's going to stop there. Oh, that's nice of it. So, ref, we're back to you. All right, cool. Um, being very low on health right now, having this nice potion of clear, uh, cure light wounds, I am uh going to uh <clears throat> pocket it. And I am going to attempt to shield bash the uh, one right in front of me. And let's go ahead and do that now. Um, no problem doing that. Mm -hmm. If you but... do not have the shield <laughs> on, mm -hmm. never mind. It's a buckler, I isn't just... it? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I had assumed it was on the entire time. Um, yeah, okay, it is. Never mind. Disregard. Other shields yeah. can't do that. You can't cast a spell with a shield unless it's a buckler specifically because it's on the okay. arm and the hand is free. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're tight, and you uh, go ahead and bring us on home. Uh, oh yeah, I um, uh, my uh, I would yeah, also like newly, to newly masterwork steel buckler that you found. Yeah, I I also so I uh having analyzed my. Th Two part fight with this singular skeleton, realized that slashing is not the answer. Instead, I needed to bludgeon this thing. And mm -hmm. I'm disregarding the fact that I've already hit it a couple times and it's probably on its last life. I think this is the answer, the only answer. And I take my shield on my wrist. I look dead at Azar's flaming feet and I just bash this thing's head off as hard as I possibly can. Hopefully, into Quinn's hands. Give him a little, uh, little alley oop with it. As uh, yeah, you go ahead, you kill it, uh, Mister Metagame DM, out of character. Uh, you didn't even do damage to it until you hit it with the shield because it has damage resistance to slashing. So you were unable to overcome the resistance. The damage numbers were so uh, low. I actually don't <laughs> catch this uh, skeleton's head in my hands. I actually uh, whip it like sideways <laughs> with my tail. I had a feeling. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that will uh, uh, feeling this level of power in my hands. I'm actually going to step into range of the next one. Beautiful. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. All right, Mister G. Eric. An ego is something that someone who got lucky a couple times might develop. Confidence <laughs> is something that the most skilled gunslinger the party's ever seen might develop after dusting another wannabe corpse. Uh, but seeing my allies, Zareph, struggle through all these hits, I have to act yet again. I've been in that position. I've been almost down, almost brought low by something that's not just a fire beetle. I won't stand for it. You're not alone, Zareph, I yell out. You're going to be fine. I'm here. We're here. And with that self-same confidence I've cultivated with the last explosive shot, I take aim again. <laughs> the boy can't miss! <laughs> oh my god. If there was a giant skeleton back there, he just runs away. <laughs> right. like, I don't want to do with that bullshit. He literally just quaking and just runs. <laughs> You know what? Fuck it, Chase. Give us a giant skeleton at this point. 
Be very careful. What hey, you hey, wish hey, for. Cal calm that shit down. Calm that shit down. <laughs> calm that shit down. Uh, All right, it's my first campaign. I want to make it at least to like season two. Calm that, Thank you. Calm that shit up, man. Like, come on. We're invincible because I'm here. <laughs> Fucking G Eric Boatwright. God, the G stands for completely gone mad with power. <laughs> the G stands for greatest shot in the West. The G stands for grandiose. As the, the scattered remains of these skeletons sink into the sand. And all is the G quiet. stands for gone bye bye. <laughs> yes. So they sink fully into the sand. They're gone, gone. No, no, no. I mean, that okay. was. Are they just resting? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, Quint, I I hope you uh you took note of the uh, the fire beetle uh, mention. Uh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you you feel away. A, a quaking from the distance. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I stand up and kind of dust myself off, um, having been kind of beaten down pretty heavily by a bunch of skeletons, and uh, <clears throat> I turn to Quinn and I just I just kind of give him a a nod and turn to G Eric and uh, just I have the just, dumbest fucking grin on my face because I'm just <laughs> like I am the hero. I just I just shake my head at him. I just <laughs> and uh, total and utter disbelief. And I look at his R and I say, "Just how I drew it up." <laughs> as far as as far as team building activities go, you almost couldn't ask for a better opportunity. <laughs> This is actually I how I just walk, press forward. It just leaves. Completely ignore Zerf once again. <laughs> I, I, I turn to Jarek and I, I say to him, um, uh, Jarek, this is actually when I wrote up the battle plan, this is how I drew it up. I, I would draw fire. You would you would do what you do. Quinn would uh would just make it spectacular, and Azar would hit every single Every single time I drew it up this way. Usually a battle plan means you need to tell us about it too, though, right? So why would I tell you to do well, what you do best? I don't want to I don't want to mess up your 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 thing you got going on here. Uh, you know what? I you're right. You're a hundred percent right. I apologize. Oh, don't feed its ego. But <laughs> this did turn out really well. Hey, uh, Zeref. Before you run your mouth anymore, can you please heal up? I just turn around and start walking towards the czar. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to run after Zaref. All right. And I'm going to stab him in the back with one of my syringes of healing. <laughs> there you go. Ahead, roll 1d8. You got it. <clears throat> Oop, and a D. I think that's the only time someone's ever wanted to be stabbed in the back. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I don't feel it's anything all at all. I feel I feel a little... Oh, uh, pl like pl plus good. one. You get you get three back, buddy. I, I feel oh, yeah, a pinch, oh, wow. and three. I immediately feel slightly better, but I don't realize what just happened. <laughs> uh, you still have Joe's potion, too. I don't think you actually drank, did you? No, I still have no, it. He's being stubborn. Uh, I still have time. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're coming up on two hours. It's ten. Do you guys want to call it now, and then we'll we'll go from there. You want to go a little longer? It's up to you guys. Uh, I'm good to keep going a little bit. Well, yeah, I can rock. Geez. I can rock it for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Nice, good man. Okay. I'm having fun, y'all. I like. It's like. Kind of one of those things. I've, tonight's session is kind of one of those, like, oh, I want to keep this rolling. Okay. Uh, as you make your way down the trail, uh, eventually to this, Damn, fast this as fuck. spot here, uh, time passes. Can't catch me, fast spot boy. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is quick. Uh, the four of you, or the five of you, I should say, Hey, Folly. Uh, find yourselves at this 
what appears to be a solid wall right in front of you uh even even though it's open on the map uh a crisp glow of light shines from the northern wall of this rock face though no obvious source of the light is apparent anybody who's looking at it uh, actually let me have all four of you go ahead and try to make a will save real quick we'll save okay <clears throat> Uh, more like won't save. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so uh, bitch, <laughs> you're, just, you're a little too angry. Eric, Zeref, <laughs> and Quinn, as you guys are staring at this weird light, uh, you realize that the rock face in front of you is not a rock face at all, but it's some sort of projection, almost like a like a si- like a silent or a mirrored image spell, and that there's very clearly something beyond. You could probably walk through with no issue. Uh, as a czar, you're like perplexed by this light emanating out of this solid rock. What the fuck? Oh, let's put a, let's put a hand inside just to be like, all right. I, I was think, gonna say, I think, I flick, oh. uh, flick a flick a rock using magic hand. All right, just see a little maybe like a little ripple. Yeah, there's a, there's a sort of a blur. In the rock face as it passes straight through with no oh, sound. And you hear it cool. you hear it hit the sand on the other side. Lazar, don't worry about it, dude. Let's just go. I look at Quinn and I uh hesitantly. Oh that cut. We heard hesitantly. Oh, I look at Quinn, and then I hesitantly follow through. I'm taking up the rear right now. You all die. Got you, fuckers. Ha ha. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't go in. I only lose an arm. I, I didn't go in. <laughs> you lost your complete. shooting arm. Once, you once again... I was going to say, technically, his arm was Once again, I just want to make... Through. It was actually the mouth of a giant skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> once again, I just would like to make it to season two, yeah. at the minimum. Thank you you did. Me. You did say hesitantly. You were right. So with fear and trepidation, you <laughs> you step through, and there's no sensations. Just walking through open air, mm-hmm. but clearly you see this rippling, faux rock behind you, as two two very thin rectangular strips of metal line either side of the wall, and are projecting, almost like firelight, onto that rock face from the inside. At the end of the hallway find yourself in is another similar sky metal door not a split one this is a single panel with a small console near it i'll be right here oh i think i know about these babies let me uh let me go sweet talker real fast for us gentlemen (laughs) i'm feeling myself right now (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. As you feel, King. Thank you. Uh, so sh- can, can I go interact with that panel? Yeah, give me one second. I'm doing something. Uh, I'll give you 12 seconds. Off I cast Dancing Lights. I'm blind! It's light. It's lit in here. I cast Blow Shit Up. <laughs> I cast Gun. <laughs> 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 that's, that's supposed to actually called America. Cast terminal <laughs> ballistics. We're in a desert, not a school, guys. Come on. My God. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let's get Chase. And Chase, Chase hated for some that. reason, B E T. Now, let's put. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> just <laughs> ignoring. This is brought to you by WB, uh, by reruns of the Bernie Mac show I watched 1,100 times in childhood. <laughs> well, that plays full circle. Curtis and I were just talking about watching Bernie Mac as kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric, as you mm-hmm. examine the panel next to the door, uh, what do you do? It's a small rectangular panel. Um, no visible slot. It's just a slightly raised piece of metal. I poke it. Touch it? Yeah, I, po- I poke the top. Uh, the door rockets upwards with a pneumatic hiss. 
revealing what I tell you guys. Revealing an all metal room. A very familiar looking one actually. I'm an old pro at this now, guys. Get the goddamn far. I should have tried to walk straight through it like it was another illusion. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely hardened sky metal. 100%. 100%. (laughs) Take one damage for walking into the door. I I look at Jeric and I'm taking in uh, the lethality of him as well as the sheer uh, ingenuity he has. And I'm pondering. Out loud, I say, he might be the most dangerous person in the world. As he says that, I go, true. It's called pure of heart, dumb of ass. I'm sorry, well, I, I didn't hear that. What would you say? Nothing, nothing. Uh, Azar, did you say something? Are you purring? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, yes. I see nothing. As... As you you take this room in, it's very familiar looking. It's very similar to the one you you encountered here, uh, with the strange devices that seem to be off. Uh, except obviously, in contrast, this room is remarkably lit. Uh, there are no torches. There's no sconces. It's lit by rectangular white panels in the ceiling. You know, gently glowing, but it's enough illumination that you can see fully. Uh, to the left and to the right, you see a similar series of complex machines. Spiral tubes, little nozzles twitching and humming. What do you do? Uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get inside there. Indeed. <laughs> uh, th- these doors here closed, I'm assuming, oh, too? Uh, at the far far side of the room is an uh, identical door to the one you just passed through with an identical small panel next to it. Well, guys. I think I got this one. And I, I just I just look at them, hand on my hip as I just like lift my arm dramatically in the air and drop a finger down onto the top of the panel. <laughs> Again, the door shoots straight up. Yeah, it's great being me. Everybody make a reflex save. <laughs> sure. God, it's great being me. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh, oh. Fuck famine, bro. Famine. Oh, the worst. Famine, famine. I'm at the buffet. You're looking through the window at me because you couldn't get the 20. How to combat is always just famine. It is it's so strange. <laughs> That's why he had to bite the skeleton. My man's hungry. <laughs> All right. Azar, you take nine points of electricity damage as the machines malfunction and let out a burst of electricity across the room. The other three take five points of electricity damage, except Quinn. I'm pretty sure you have DR5. Do you not? I do. Electric, I do tiefling shit, dog. As you were just comfortably walking through the <laughs> that the rest of them got jammed with. Uh, uh, this this brings me straight to my knees, by the way. I am on both knees is, right now. Are you at zero hit points or less? I'm, I know I'm at I'm at two, but I'm straight to my knees in pain. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, okay, and we need to. Just a quick quote. Is there a way I'm supposed to specify this electrical damage? It doesn't matter. It's it's mostly on my end. For stuff. Oh, I'm just just making sure. Yeah, Thank you don't you. you don't have to. I'm new, guys. What up? Hello. Good questions. Teachable moment. And uh, you have four round cylinder machines go off again, so I would suggest skedaddling the fuck out of there. Uh, uh ow. Okay, that hurt. Everybody, let's go quick. <laughs> what hurt? Uh, I, uh, I, I sh- crawl into the next room and I shakily fumble my hands to the Cure Light Wounds potion. <laughs> and uh, as I reach into my breastplate for the Cure Light Wounds potion, uh, I drop the four passes 
that were given to me earlier that I found on the ground on the floor. Very nice. Uh, as you do, you get you get a good look at them sober this time, and you notice that they're each addressed by first name to the four of you. Uh, <clears throat> long, long story short, uh, the the other night when Jarek and I were and Polly, let's not forget Polly, were uh, having a good time. Uh, some some person uh, bumped into me on the side of the building and told me I had quote dropped something. And uh, this uh, this leather bundle here has four passes in it to uh, Silver Disc Hall. Uh, it's like a voucher for like a hundred ships, something for gambling, something for us to look forward to. I think if we ever make it out of here alive, as I reach for that cure light wounds potion and start to take the cork out of it and drink it, and I'll roll for whatever is necessary to heal as well. Yeah, roll one d8, and then all you guys roll knowledge local at the mention of Silver Disc Hall. <laughs> Silver disc? I hardly know her disc. Local, not, en not engineering. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Very well constructed. There we go. Oh my god, this is the one. Uh, and this will be my heal. Okay. Hey. That's a good heal. Nice one. I let out a large, a large belch, and I smile at Quinn. I just Would take, you... like, two fingers and do, like, a salute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zareph, did you roll local? I don't think you did. I did not. You said the three of them. No, it's all you guys. Oh, okay. Fourteen. Okay. Somehow, you know this, bizarrely. Uh, let me scroll to the right section of the page. One second. Uh, can, can we assume everybody's in, in the hallway? Yeah, you guys are all safely in the hallway. Okay, cool, cool. We'll, we'll get to that momentarily. Uh... Yeah, so Silver Disc Hall is a uh, upscale gambling and entertainment establishment in Torch. Uh, it's the most populous and it's the largest, not necessarily the best. Uh, that's about all you know, Zareph. Bizarre, you know Silver Disc Hall is run by a dude named Garmin Ulrith. And Garmin is extremely influential in town, which is impressive considering he's neither a counselor or a merchant or legitimate businessman of any repute. Uh, he's on the sly. He's actually affiliated with what passes for the Thieves Guild here in Torch, which is a gang of thugs and ruffians who call themselves the Rope Fists. Pretty sure. He's that actually, was rope fist? Yeah, rope fists. You're pretty sure he's the boss, but you couldn't get a straight answer out of anybody. Okay. So for the first time of this adventure, I asked Quinn, do you know what Silver Disc Hall is? Silver what? Have you ever heard Silver the Disc Darth Hall. Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> uh no see i typically go off uh on my own in the woods to be alone when you guys are philandering about remember philander i used that word before mm -hmm. do any of you know what silver disc call is uh gently yeah it's uh kind of like an upscale um kind of a game house, if you will, but that's kind of all I know. I, I kind of saw it as I was walking through town. You, you kind of smile when he says upscale because it's presented as such, but it's realistically anything but. So that's but I think, I think it is. Yeah, he would think that, yeah. not, not having been there, but you know that it, it's not on the up and up, even though it presents itself to be. I mean, it's definitely a shady establishment. No, that cut. I heard. I think we heard duh or do. Oh. 
do any of you know who owns? Uh, again, I I don't even know what this place is. Uh, is it is it is it Luffy and uh, Hobblepot or whatever his name was? I, I, Lucius Otterby, please, and I don't think that's who owns it. I I look. He asked. I'm just trying to help. I let out a low growl at a uh, G. Eric's quip and um just oh. say, Garmin Ulrith. Well known in town, but he has some shady ties. How did you get these? Who gave them to you? I said some guy looked like he was uh, relieving himself behind the tavern. Uh, told me that I had dropped them. I mean, they're clearly uh, you can see they're clearly um, addressed to us by first name. So um, I'm regaining my strength. Uh, so uh, the, they were meant for us. Clearly. At that, I just take my ticket and stash it in my pocket. I'm going to go once again. And you cut out there, Kurt? Yeah, yeah you we, keep cutting out. Keep cutting out. Ah, ah Jesus. We heard you put uh, it in your pocket, but that was it. Yeah, I'm going to just put it in my pocket, and without saying a word, I just press forward a bit, and I'm going to try to figure out my mic. Okay. Yeah, like I said, uh, kind of an upscale place, something for us to look forward to when we get back. I'm sure Polly will enjoy it as well. I mean, it's, uh, from what I saw, a pretty fine establishment, and uh, Quinn may even be a... Ch- maybe even a chance to make a little extra gold, Quinn, since I know that's kind of your deal. I uh, take both my hands and kind of like flutter my fingers together. You know what I mean? Like deviously. Polly sticks his head out of the tube. He goes, well, you think I've been buying all the Catapeshi marching powder, huh? Bam, 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 bam. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He just kind of looks around. He's like, oh, shit. We are... Not in torch anymore, huh? Yeah, and you find yourselves yeah. in a similar, entirely sky metal hallway with fluorescent strips in the ceiling. In front of you, you see another similar sky metal door with a one of those panels next to it, and then a hallway that branches off towards the right. All right, I uh, I kind of oh, match face with the czar. Yep. I kind of just right behind his R as we uh as we move forward and we kind of shimmy up to the corner, I suppose. I'm gonna hold up the rear. Kind of casually strolling behind everyone, thinking about the gold that I potentially can make at this uh <clears throat> upscale upscale establishment. Um it's a look over uh, my shoulder at G Eric almost a uh, expect. I was saying that I was going to look over my shoulder at G. Eric almost expectedly. Oh, you want me to do this one too? Without saying a word, I just gesture and point at the door. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, is there, there's another panel you said? There is. And as you touch it, uh, nothing let's, happens. Let's ex- oh, okay, I was going to say, let's examine this one a little bit more first. As there is a small rectangular slot right above the panel itself. Oh, I remember this kind. We need to find uh, a little little, little slip of uh, something to put in here, and then uh, hopefully it'd work. So uh, I think we keep going on for now and see if we can find that little rectangle of ours. Hey, don't you guys guys have it still? I don't think we ever got rid of any of them. Yeah, I I think you had the yellow and the red. Oh. Yeah, we never made an out loud decision to pitch them. I didn't know if we, yeah, we slid them in and pulled them back out. We didn't, we didn't lock them the, in there. Right? The, yeah, the med bay one, I think got eaten. But I think you still kept the red one. Oh yeah. shoot, let's let's pop the red one in then. I totally forgot about that. There's the door parts of the pneumaticus. Give me just a moment.
hold for dramatic. Don't 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 do. There's going to be an army behind oh, it. Dramatic DM fog of war removal and description text reading. As the door opens, the air in the room buzzes and hums with electrical energy. Strips of glowing fluorescent rectangular light line the room from above, while strange flickering windows line the east and west walls. A large glass-topped circular table sits in the middle of the room. To the north, you see a large metal desk covered in blinking lights, while a humming pillar of purple and black metal stands nearby, its sides flashing with tendrils of violet energy. A single golden panel flashes with soft but incessant light on the side of this pillar. A thick layer of dust coats everything in the room, diffusing the lights shining from various surfaces. At first glance, many of the machines seem cracked, damaged, or otherwise ruined. Beep. Let me uh, zoop on over here. Buzz. Beep. I'm gonna casually I'm walk, walk over to the, the uh, light. Oh. Yeah, I'm walking towards the purple light, and uh, I actually, as my tail kind of inquisitively whips behind me, I want to try and touch it. Are there any chairs at this round table? There are a few. Oddly I'm gonna shaped. sit at one. Yeah. I'm gonna sit back and watch. Vaguely humanoid. You want to touch the purple pillar? Mm-hmm. Are you touching the right. pillar itself or the, the golden like flickering light? Like the, the tendrils that are like flickering about. I want to like almost like a cat going after a uh, you know like something that's trying to like catch like a toy or something. Just like hmm. I want to try and touch one of the tendrils. You know the, the little Tesla balls? Mm-hmm. It's, it's similar to that. Like it doesn't shock you, but there's a, a weird ionizing feeling as you pass your hand through the light or your tail. Whoa, guys, look at this! And I just well, like if you use it with your other hand, it's like a stranger. If you never mind. <laughs> Beep boop. This place is I'm cool. What do you think this is? Touch. I'm going to touch the uh, golden. You said there was a golden light there as well? Yeah, there's like a square of uh, like a panel display that's glowing gold. Yeah. That, that cut. Hang on. Oh, I'm Where's saying I'm, damn, I'm going to interact with that. Okay. It depresses with a soft click. A few moments later, the machines rapidly whirred to life. It's a series of deep, I mean deep hums you feel through the floor reverberating in the walls. Loud metallic clicks. A moment later, the circular table flares to light, projecting a holographic rendition of the desert surface outside. Numerous square panels on the wall reappear each filled with static, and the pillar of purple metal begins to pulsate gently. Everybody go ahead and roll perception for me. Hmm, this is the one. Mm -hmm. When you are absolutely transfixed by this bizarre purple column, <laughs> but... In true Eric. fashion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Eric, Zeref, and Azar, all of you hear a loud bang from the from the room north of you. As if something was just knocked over. Hmm. Well, we should probably check that out soon. Yeah, but uh, guys, are you seeing this purple shit? What is this? Uh, uh, Go, go go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, sitting back in the chair, seeing this table light up and seeing all of these strange colors and things, uh, I, I say to the group, um, isn't it, uh, can we just for a second take in what is 
happening right now. We're underground. We were just in a desert. We're now in a metal box with a bunch of lights and glowing things. We just fought skeletons that had four arms. Can someone please attempt to make sense of this for me? We we don't even know where Connor is. We have we're not even. Can we just make sense of this? Oh, I have no idea. I'm just here. I'm starting to emit uh, the quintessential quintessential uh, purring sounds as I'm still staring at this purple light. I look up at Azar for any confirmation at all before I just push on out of the room. I look at Zeref and I say, we have to keep pressing. So we'll investigate that noise. I'm gonna check out this this green. It's you said it's a green like panel-y thing, right? Uh, it's like a series of it's like an instrument panel you would see in a, a 1930s sci-fi movie. Yeah, let me uh, what what let me let me see what I can glean from this sucker. All engineering. I'm gonna press my. <laughs> Uh, I didn't see what it was. Hold on, sorry. Distracted. Um, uh, it glitched out. It said 38 before. Oh, uh, how strange. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're just, your eyes sort of light up like a kid in a candy shop. And you back away from the instrument panel, not, not quite willing to engage with anything. And as you do, you just turn around and you, you see this, like, full resolution holographic rendering of the dome. And uh, if you look closely, you can see the specks of the skeleton bones where the fight took place. And you can even see, like, the disturbances in the sand from how they, like, the paths they took to get to you guys. Rendered in oh, that, perfect that cut minute out. detail. Sorry, I got the little princess with me. Hang on. Well, how much of that cut out? What didn't you hear? Oh, it was, like, after the skeleton dotting the area kind of thing. Yeah, like you could see the trails from their footsteps. Like it's rendered in that much minute detail. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So Azar and I, I've, I've kind of pushed on. Um, we just kind of left them in the room. Yeah. <laughs> All this techno sorcery stuff is beyond Zerf. <laughs> I look around and uh, I'm still like and mesmerized I'm... by this and uh, I kind of look around the room and suddenly realize like oh hey where did uh, where did Azar and Zaref go uh, out out they left okay but have we figured out what this purple thing is though you miss the greatest role playing opportunity of all time to roll bluff there and say ooh <laughs> uh Quinn, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm just not that interested in the purple thing. <laughs> Purple's just not my color. It's like my favorite color, but I what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna as I walk by kind of just like lightly urge Quinn toward the door with me. Like, come on, buddy, let's let's get out there. We can come back to the purple thing later. Okay. You promise? Yeah, buddy, I promise. Let's go find the let's go find the boys. Okay. You see a familiar instrument panel, this time Sans key slot. And uh Azar, you're pretty sure after seeing him just touch the panel, if you tap it, the doors will open. I then go ahead and tap it and see if the doors will open. Indeed. They do. The similar pneumatic kiss. Let me clear fog. Hang on one second. Look at that, Azar. You got the makings of an engineer yourself. <laughs> I say nothing. Indeed. As the door shoots upwards, First thing you notice is a large metal table 
surrounded by odd-looking chairs that dominates the room. To the west, what appears to be a transparent wall of sorts looks out over the strange desert valley you marched through earlier, although the lighting is different, changed. Four pillars support the 15-foot-tall ceiling. All around, dozens of crude images of a pickaxe made from skull and bones have been painted on the walls in an ivory pigment, along with several phrases in an unrecognizable language. Did you all roll religion for me? Everyone knows I am the most godly one here. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> oh, that's my. surprising. You see 17. The absolute blasphemy of what you're seeing hits you at once, Azar. As you recognize the unholy symbol of Xiphus, the god of suicide, unnatural death, accidental death, and tragedy. The people who worship him. That's typically something that only falls under the purview of absolute madmen. And it's definitely not native to whatever this construction is that you find yourself in. Floor is yours, gentlemen. I say quietly, I, I recognize that symbol. Just just loud enough that Zeref can hear me. Also, uh, just briefly for reference, this is not to scale. It's the only way I can get it on here. The table is not the size of four of you. It's regular size, but <laughs> just roll with okay. it. Yeah. Um, I, I hear Zar, and um, because him and I have a slight connection to the stories of our past, I I uh, look at him and I, I just kind of lean in and and quietly say to him, um, please, please tell me. I noticed the uh, very like hushed, muffled kind of talking amongst Zaref and uh, Azar. And I kind of giggle to myself and say to Jarek, oh, look, they're being friends. Oh, it's about time they did. I was getting kind of worried for a moment. Man, this might actually be a fun adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I ignore them um just focus on Zeref and say that's the symbol of um the god of suicide, Xiphus. Suicide tragedy, some weird deaths I don't know too too much, but Oh, that's spooky. That symbol shouldn't be here. Hmm. And if it is here, it might be the work of some of his followers. Um, ignorant to the whole thing, I turn to Azar and I say, um, how can one be a god of what man chooses to do or not do with their own life? I don't know too much about why they believe. I just know what they believe, but... I just know that if that symbol's here, that means we might be dealing with some issues. If it's this close to Torch, what could that mean for the people above? We'll have to find out. If they all commit suicide, doesn't that just mean free loot for us? Ever the practice. I growl in response. Mm, I step aside. <laughs> I press forward a bit. About here. What? What did I say? And, that, and actually, I'll look back at Zeref and beckon for him to come forward as well. Yep, I pull up right beside him. Next, this is a pillar, I'm assuming, to our left? Correct. Okay. The pillars are the only thing that I've... correctly on the map. I don't know why everything else is not to scale, but... I realize I kind of might have said something a little insensitive and I kind of just like stick to myself and maybe kick at the dust a little bit on the floor. Hmm. Everybody go ahead and roll perception. Sure. Give me the exception. 
Beast. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Daddy needs some new shoes. Hey. Mm-hmm. All right. They uh, were Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Quinn, and Azar, all of you see a figure step out from behind the rear pillar. Who the fuck is that? Uh, oh, geez. There's not two of them. <laughs> uh, although he does have two pairs of arms and something akin to flesh left over that's his one body. Of th- that's one of those skeletons, just a little less skeletal. As, as he steps forward with obvious hostility and mumbles something incoherent in an alien tongue. This motherfucker's speaking in reverse. <laughs> uh, He's Missy Elliot. <laughs> I just in, like just innately draw my sword and start to hiss. It bows deeply. I kind of everybody roll initiative. It bows deeply, okay. It's, it wants at, this ritual death. At that particular... Damn. Uh, Deep bamming, bro. It's going to catch these ritual hands here in a second. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, I'm going to step behind this pillar, and I'm also going to stealth up. I 100% see the end of this battle. Hey, does that work us- for a stealth roll? Us being victorious in this oh, battle. Yeah. Hey, does that work for a stealth roll, guys? By the way, Alan rolled a natural twenty on his stealth roll. <laughs> as part of, I rolled a natural twenty initiative. As, well, that's true. Watch for the weave. That twenty is creepy. Uh, see, literally sees the future as Eric disappears behind this pillar. I saw him disappear. I can still see him because I see the future. And is hitherto. I mean, he disappeared from the. Things view. Else. Anytime you guys look at me, I will give a little wave, like "hello." <laughs> we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Oh, you cliffhanger son of a bitch! I love you. But-